All right, guys, we are changing power steering line. This is the return line on a 2005 Toyota Sienna. Um, this one has the uh, V6 engine in it, and I forget what other engine I think they offer in this van, but this line here is notorious for rotting out just because of the location of it. It sits right above the subframe on the passenger side of the vehicle. You can see here we've got a rubber line that comes down. There's just a hose clamp, very simple to take off. Um, and then there's also a mount. So there's the clamp, there's the mount. This hard line runs just to in front of the subframe here. And then uh, I don't know if you can see up in there, but there's another rubber line that then goes to the cooler. Uh, I believe it's a cooler anyways. So uh, first things first, to get started, what I'm going to do is take this wheel off and that's gonna give us lots of room, lots of access to that line. There's a plastic shield that's there as well that we're gonna remove, two 10 millimeter bolts and a plastic push pin. And then we're going to also remove uh, a, uh, some hardware for this shield. And I'll probably just, uh, I don't know if I wanna remove the whole thing. I might just remove portion of it and like let it hang down. So we need to uh, gain access to the area we're about to work on. So let's get started and start taking things apart. Um, Okay, so two 10 millimeter bolts here, and then also on the forward section of this plastic shield, there's a push pin, and it's sort of hidden right in there. If you push your fender liner forwards, you can see. Now, the OEM clip that you will have, or should have, uh, the center will push in, and that's going to allow the clip to then release, and you can pull the whole clip out. Uh, this one that's in here now is uh, aftermarket one. It's just got a uh, Phillips head sort of thing on there and it's threaded in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this shield. And that's like I say, gonna give us lots of access to this line that we need to change. Um, here's our line, runs underneath this motor mount, no big deal. You can see on this side, there's the uh, one of the mounts that holds the hard line to the subframe. There is underneath of all that dirt, there should be a 10 millimeter bolt that holds that down. Uh, there it is right there. Um, and then we're gonna remove that. Hopefully uh, it doesn't break off depending on how rusty your subframe is and the bolt. Uh, it may be very tight. You might wanna spray some penetrating oil on there. Up to you, do your thing, try to get it off. Um, and then there's also another mount up near the front and you can see right there there is also another 10 millimeter bolt that holds that on so we got two mounts remove both of those and then before we remove the clamps that hold the rubber portion onto the hard line i'm going to use uh two needle nose vice grips to lightly clamp down on that rubber line so that we don't lose all of our fluid so I'm going to get these two bolts out and we'll continue. So a bit of a tip for All right, so these hose clamps, this one can be a little bit tricky to get to depending on where it's clocked. The uh, tabs were actually facing straight up, so 
this tool that I have here is just a cable actuated um, hose clamp removal tool and it's fantastic for tight areas. So what I'm gonna try to do here is just move that uh, clamp up the rubber hose a little bit and uh, stick it up there. This thing is, uh, this rubber hose is so oily and swollen from uh, undercoating and all kinds of grease and stuff. So it's a little bit tight, but I gotta get up there as far as I can. Um, and then, uh, yeah, clamp that hose off. Real short ends. Okay, so I'm just pinching that hose off. And there is like hose clamp pliers that you can buy that are not uh, vice grips, but I just have vice grips. I don't have those pliers. So all I'm doing is just applying enough force that it's just constricting that line so the fluid uh, doesn't come through. It's not super tight. I don't want to compromise that hose. And then on this side, you can see where the clip used to be and I've moved it. And we're gonna do the same thing over there. And that's gonna isolate this section of line so that when we remove it, we don't lose all of our fluid. Okay, so we've got it isolated now. Try to break this bond. Grab yourself uh, something to catch the fluid because it is gonna leak some fluid. A little oil bucket right here. Pop those lines off. And uh, yeah, like I say, it's gonna leak some fluid, um, even if it's just trickling. You know, this is what it is. Okay, I got this one starting to come now. I'm just gonna let that uh, just dribble for a second. There we go, we got our line out now. Um, now, if you wanna buy a pre-made line, it's much easier. I'm gonna make a line. And uh, you can go down and check the uh, link in the description below for a line. Um, but like I say, I'm just gonna, I got bulk stock, I'm just gonna bend up a line. So that's why I kept this in, in the same shape that it's in. I didn't bend it or anything like that. So here we go. Okay, so if you do decide you wanna make your own line, uh, first thing I do is just, run the line across like a flat surface and then figure out roughly the length that I need, measure it, cut it. Next thing you want to do, take these uh, mounts off. Now you can take a picture to note where it goes. Um, and the way these things come off is they're like stuck together like that. So you can go ahead and uh, get a little screwdriver in there, split them apart, take that off, clean the rubber. And then um, what I basically do is just I'll start to bend the line. This is nickel copper, so it's very easy to bend. You can do it by hand. And I'll, I'll make a little bend and then match it up. And then usually what I do is just put a bunch of tape around here, and then I'll start to just bend the line and contour it to the same shape as this. But you can see that we have a bend right here and then this uh, mount. So in this case, we can just stick it on over top. It's not a big deal, but some mounts you gotta slide it on. So just remember, slide the mount on first, then make your bend. And as far as flares go, I just have my brake line flare kit and uh, that's going to do the trick for us here. No big deal. Um, now this line size, you can see it's uh, three eighths and Toyota uses metric, not standard. So uh, I forget what size that would be. Uh... Okay, so um, yeah, all I did was just, like I say, you stick it on there. You start your first bend, get a couple bends in, and then just uh, start taping it up. And then you can just follow it along so that your line is pretty close. Now I over measured, which is perfect. That's what I wanted to do. Not over by much, so we don't have a lot of waste, but now uh, I just cut it to size. I'm gonna transfer over this last um, mount and slide it back. I'll flare the end. You can see I don't have the die to do that type of flare, that uh, line flare, but that's okay. We just do a, a regular um, a bubble flare at the end 
and uh, yeah, that'll work just fine. It doesn't have to be very big either. I just wanted enough that uh, the hose clamp will run into that and it, it holds it on. If you just stick this kind of line on without a flare on the end, um, you can put a couple gear clamps on there. It might hold, but chances are, even with a return line, uh, that bit of pressure, the fluid will creep underneath and uh, it, your line will blow off. So, so I'm going to try to line up these hoses here get those to start just like so and then uh, sort of get one of the one or two of these mounts started sorry it's kind of a uh, not a very nice spot for you to watch uh, feeling around through the hole there it is Okay, the line's in. I'm just tightening down the mounts. When you're putting the line in, watch that you don't get a bunch of uh, undercoating or dirt into the line. Very important. All right, so we've got everything down. Clamps are on, looking good. Check our clearances. Make sure the line clears everything. That's the nice thing about this stuff is that we can uh, bend it and tweak it as, as we need. Um, it looks like we're not rubbing on anything, so the bend was a success. Now we just need to lower the vehicle down. We're going to add a little bit of fluid because we lost some. And then uh, what I'm going to do is before I start it, I'm going to just dry steer left and right a whole bunch of times to try to just cycle that little bit of air that's in that line up to the top of the reservoir and then start the vehicle, let it run. And uh, we'll do one check before we go ahead and just put everything back together just to make sure that the line's not leaking. All right, so I'm just using some Toyota automatic transmission fluid. That's what it calls for in the service manual. If you want to, you can go to your local parts store and pick up power steering fluid that's for Toyota vehicles. That also works. So I have, uh, the reservoir was down. Um, it was emptied about the amount of the reservoir, so. Filled it up to uh, for near the max line. And now I'm just gonna go turn the key on and turn the wheels. Full left, full right, full left, full right. Probably do that five or six times without starting the vehicle. And what that does is just helps purge any of the air that may be in the lines up to the reservoir. So I'm just installing the shield right now. I'm just letting it run to uh, make sure that all the lines are good to go. They're not gonna leak on the customer. I also cleaned all the affected areas that had any fluid that spilled. That way it doesn't drip where they think, oh, it's leaking, and then they come back. So also, it's good for the next guy that's got to work on it. That way he doesn't call it for a line or something like that. Um, I don't recommend putting this shield on while it's running, only because it's so close to the belt and the safety hazard. But I choose to do it at my own risk. Now that that's on, just got to install that one clip that's in there. And then uh, we just have that other shield that runs across the front underneath of the bumper. And we can install the wheel. So once you get uh, the shield and all that stuff on, torque the wheels. Uh, 79 foot-pounds, I believe, is what uh, Toyota's torque is. Um, I tighten them down to uh, 95 to 100 foot-pounds, a little snugger, but it is what it is. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below. Don't forget to do it. hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.